What's up, what's up, awesome people? I love you so much and it never fails that I'm just incredibly honored that y'all would show up on the Have You Heard podcast today. My name is Emma Mae McDaniel and y'all tuned in for a really special treat because this is episode one of a multiple part series where we are talking about who you are because of who God is. And today we are talking about specifically how you are not the struggle. So friend, grab your headphones and let's get into the word. I feel like this episode is really one that whoever you are, wherever you're coming from, whatever your story is, you showed up for a good episode because we all struggle. It's like a common denominator of all humanity. And so if you hopped on the podcast today thinking simply that you are all alone and that nobody gets it and that you're probably the only one who struggles with what you're struggling with, I just want to right off the bat knock that right out of the park because it's false. I love, even whenever we're talking about the struggles of temptation, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, Paul says that the no temptation has overtaken you beyond what is common to man. Like, right there. And then you read in 1 Peter 5, where we're the Peter is talking about the devil and how he prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking for whom he may devour. And then he says to stand firm and resist him, knowing that your family of believers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Just there in those two scriptures alone, I hope that you're encouraged to know that you're not alone. And even if that doesn't sit on your heart and you don't hear me when I say that, then hear this, that I struggle too. <laughs> even if I've never met you, we're in the same boat because we're human and we struggle. And so just be encouraged. Um, I know personally, per like specific struggles in my life are in the boat of fear and worry and overthinking. And for you, it may look like comparison it may look like body image and eating disorders and or it may look like you have a past of feeling like you just never made the mark felt like all throughout school you never just got the grade that you worked so hard to get and maybe failure is just written you feel like it's written across your forehead and I just want you to know wherever you're at and if I didn't mention one particular struggle wherever you are I want to encourage you that that's not who you are. I'm, I am not fear. You are not worry. You are not anorexia. You are not failure. You are not what you are struggling with. And I want to simply put that out there with such boldness and confidence because I think that whenever we separate our identity and who we are from what we're struggling with, we are given a space of freedom to be able to learn from our struggle and move forward in freedom and be able to help other people in their struggle and maybe grow out of those struggles and be strengthened and not be bound down by them. Because I think the moment that we are convinced that our identity identity is associated with what we do is the moment that we have put a barrier in between ourselves and the opportunity to walk freely. I love in Psalm where the psalmist says, Lord, set me free from my prison so I may praise your name fully. And I think for a lot of us, our prison is that we think we are what we do. And simply because of that, the sin that we're walking in, the struggles that we've walked through, because we think that's who we are, we can't walk in freedom from it because we can't leave ourselves. And it's just this chaotic, crazy, confusing life that honestly we were not made for. So hear me that you may be struggling just as I have struggles, but you are not your struggle. And I think too that <laughs> I... I can confidently say I'm probably not the only one in this boat, but sometimes it's hard for me to even simply acknowledge that I struggle. And what I mean by that is sometimes subconsciously I will have this unrealistic expectation on myself to have it all figured out, to have it all together and not struggle at all. Even though I know clear as day that I am human and I fail and I struggle every single day, there's still this like 
standard that I hold over my head of I can't mess up but because I'm human and I do every single day I'm really quick to be frustrated with myself and I'm really quick to be hard on myself because whether or not I said it out loud and put a name to it I was expecting perfection and I truly think that that is another trap that we can get caught in and what I mean by trap is whenever we have an unrealistic expectation of perfection over ourselves then we can never actually deal with the root acknowledge the problem because we're so frustrated frustrated that there even is a problem. So I think there's freedom in acknowledging one, that you are not what you're struggling with and two, that you struggle. Because in the acknowledgement of the struggle, you're creating space for you to accept the fact that, yep, I'm human. Now what are we going to do about it? Because as long as I'm living in denial, and as long as I'm pretending that nothing's wrong, and as long as I'm trying to keep my act together and not let anybody be aware that I struggle, I'm just, I'm robbing myself of my own freedom. And so I want freedom for you. I want joy for you. I want for you to walk in the life that you are called to. And I think one practical step that takes time I still have to daily remind myself of it. I think it's a lifelong practical step by step, but something that you can take home today is remind yourself that you may be struggling, but that's not who you are. And give yourself permission to say, I'm human and I struggle. And breathe. Hey guys, I'm so excited to tell y'all about this next product because it's actually something that I use every single day. I started taking Athletic Greens because it was an easy way to take care of myself and be healthy, especially with how I travel all the time. It's a way to get my greens in every day. But I am going to be straight up with you. It isn't the best flavor in the world, but because it's packed with so many good things, I know that I'm doing good to my body whenever I take it every day. It's a lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free, or gluten free, it lines up with all of those things. And it has over 7,000 five star reviews. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. Guys, that's it. There's no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash Emma. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash Emma to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Scripture tells us to be wise with our money and Credit Karma can actually help you do this by helping you look for a low interest personal loan that could save you money while you're paying off big purchases. Credit Karma uses your credit data to find loan offers that are personalized to you so that you can have a better idea of what loan amount you can get approved for. Credit Karma will even show you your chances of approval so you can choose between loan offers that you're more likely to get approved for and apply with more confidence. Comparing loan offers on Credit Karma is 100% free and it won't affect your credit scores and can save you money. Are you ready to apply? Well, you can head on over to creditkarma.com slash loan offers to see personalized offers. Go to creditkarma.com slash loan offers to find the loan for you. Again, that's creditkarma.com slash loan offers. There's, just take a deep breath and simply acknowledging that you're human and that struggling is a part of it. Breathe and let yourself enjoy getting to learn. There's so much to glean from from the mess ups. <laughs> if I'm continually thinking that I'm not, su I'm not supposed to mess up and I can't mess up and I'm frustrated with myself every single day that I do, then I'm missing great opportunities to glean knowledge and apply it tomorrow through wisdom and pass it along to other people so I can help them too. So yeah, just be encouraged. I feel like I'm kind of talking to myself a little bit in that too. I remember one day in particular, I couldn't even tell you what I was be, I was afraid of or in my head about, but I was talking to my mom about it because she's just one of my people. 
which is so important to have your people that you talk about the real stuff with, that you talk about the hard stuff with, that you talk about the struggles with. My mom is one of those people and I was processing out with her whatever it was I was in my head about. And she said, Emma, you are not special. She literally said that. <laughs> and you may be thinking, uh, what? Why would she say that? How do you take that? And to be so honest with you, it's exactly what I needed to hear. I ended up looking up what the definition of special is. And the definition of special is to be greater, better, or otherwise different from what is usual. To be better, to be greater, or otherwise different from what is usual. And my mom told me, Emma, you are not better than other people. You are not greater than the common human. You are not otherwise different from what is usual, meaning you are expecting yourself to be perfect when you're human. And so I think somebody here listening needs to know that you aren't special. And I'm not saying that to, to like hurt your feelings. I'm actually saying that to relieve you of a pressure that you were not made to carry. That you are human. Accept that. You are not greater, better, otherwise different from what is usual in the sense that you struggle just like everybody else on the planet in all of history. <sighs> to breathe. To hold yourself to a standard of perfection is to hold yourself to an unrealistic and defeating standard. You are not expected to have it all figured out. And what I think is so incredibly powerful is when we acknowledge that we are not special, <laughs> like I'm no better than you, you're no better than me, we're on common ground in the sense that both of us, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Not a single one of us are righteous, not even one. The best that we could ever offer is like filthy rags unto the Lord because of how perfect and holy he is. All of us are in that boat. None of us are special in that regard. But Jesus, Jesus is special because Jesus being fully God and fully man came and lived a perfect life on this earth that none of us, you nor I, could ever do. He was greater. He was better. And he was otherwise different from what is usual. He met the standard that none of us could meet. But in order to be at peace with God and live the life that we were designed to live and live in relationship, back in friendship, united in perfection with the one who made us, we had to meet that standard. But we couldn't. As I said earlier, we all fell short. And so knowing that we couldn't meet that standard, God came to us and he met that standard for us. He was special for us. He was greater. He was better. He was otherwise different from what is usual when we couldn't be. And he came though he was tempted in every way, he did not sin. Though he faced the commonality of being a human in every single day life, he pleased the Father in every way. In all of his capacity, he brought glory to the name of God when we didn't. And he died the death that we deserve because, guys, the cost of us not being perfect, the cost of us rebelling from God, the one who made us and living life our own way, doing our own thing, trying to find peace in someone other than him, something other than him, trying to find joy and contentment and satisfaction and hope and pleasure, trying to find our identity and who we are in something or someone other than the very one who made us. Because we did that, we deserve death. The wages of our sin is death, Romans 6, 23 says. And Jesus was so perfect and yet he took our place. 
He paid those wages for us by dying on the cross. He was buried in a tomb, and three days later, he rose from the grave, defeating sin, defeating death, defeating hell, defeating the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, so that anyone who puts their trust in him and acknowledges that he is special, that he is God, that he is the Lord, that he is the King of Kings, that God did raise him from the dead, then we shall be at peace with God and we shall be in relationship with him. And I think that's what's so cool to me too is it is through Christ that we can experience this life of knowing that, yeah, I've screwed up a lot. I, like, there hasn't been a single day of my life that I haven't messed up in some way, that I haven't proven that I'm not worthy to be in the presence of the Lord. But God, who is so rich in mercy and gave us his son, through him, the old has passed away. And behold, the new is here. Behold, my identity is no, it's not in what I've done, but it's in what he did. And it's in who he is. That's why this series is called Realizing who you are because of who God is. I love Romans 8, 1 that says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You get that? For those who are in Christ Jesus, in Him, I don't have condemnation. You're like, what is condemnation? Basically, condemnation is that you are identified by the sin that you've committed. That's who you are. That's how you are seen. And in Christ, you're now seen in his blameless, perfect, spotless work in who he is. And what's so powerful, too, is when you think about who wrote that, Romans 8.1, that was Paul. Paul, who claims that he was the chief of sinners, who murdered Christians, who hated believers, who hated this man named Jesus. And now... Standing in the grace of God, he says, I fully am convinced that there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because he was special when I, when I couldn't be, when I wasn't. And I love in Psalm 34 at 5 that says, Those who look to the Lord are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. We look to the Lord and we know that I'm not defined by what I've done. I'm not defined by the fact that I turned from you, God, but I am defined by the fact that you turned to me and that I am in you. Isn't that amazing? Praise be to God. So, guys, I just want to I just want to leave you with this little wrap up of a recap. And that is that you are not the struggle. You may struggle, but that's not who you are. There's also freedom in being honest about the fact that you struggle because you can't learn from it, you can't move on, you can't, you're trapped in it whenever you are holding this unrealistic expectation over yourself to be perfect. And you aren't special, but I say that to relieve you because there is a good God who was greater, who was better, who was different in a way that none of us could be and through Him, we don't have to live a life of shame anymore. We don't have, a live a lot, have to live a life identified by the things that we've done, but set free from the power of sin and death and walking in peace and contentment and confidence in our identity, even when we mess up, not if, when. Just because I've given my life to the Lord doesn't mean I stop messing up. I still mess up every day, but now my response to it can be different because I know that's not who I am. And it's by His grace that I can learn from it. I can move on. And I trust Him in that. His grace is sufficient. Guys, I love you so much. So much. And I hope that you're so, so encouraged. If you are watching on YouTube, be sure and give a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not. Comment down below how you were encouraged, what you think we're going to be talking about moving forward, what you learned. And if you are listening via Apple or Spotify, 
be sure and um, download, rate, review, share it with your people. Tell them about the series so y'all can tune in and share with each other what you're learning and what you're gleaning from this time. And if you haven't already, be sure and follow us on Instagram at the Have You Heard Podcast. I love y'all so much and I'll talk to y'all next week.